in this video we will learn about ataxia so objectives of this video will be what is ataxia what are the different types of ataxia and how to differentiate sensory and motor ataxia so when i tell ataxia it is nothing but loss of coordination is called as ataxia so clinically the patient will present with history of fall or they'll have a history of uh, swaying while walking okay so the clinical tests done to assess the coordination are for upper limb and lower limb we have different set of tests in upper limb most commonly we do is finger nose test finger finger nose test a slight modification of finger nose test that is a diadochokinesia it is nothing but alternate supination and pronation we to ask the person to patient to do that and also we'll ask the patient to draw a circle in the air with the help of an index finger so these are the tests to assess coordination in the upper limb test to assess the coordination in the lower limb are knee heel test romberg sign tandem walking and drawing a circle in the air with the help of great toe this is done when the patient is in a supine position so there are two main types of ataxia we have sensory ataxia and motor ataxia uh, problem in the cerebellum most commonly leads to motor ataxia okay and problem if it is in the proprioception proprioception is nothing but joint position sense it's a sensory function right and it is being carried by the dorsal column pathway so any problem in the proprioception we call it as sensory ataxia now coming on to finger nose test uh, this is a test done with the help of your hand so it is a, it's a upper it's a test for coordination test for upper limb here you ask the person to sit on a couch uh, with the open eyes first this test is done okay what have what the patient has to do is first ask him to outstretch his hand outstretch his hand meaning fully abduct the shoulder joint and fully extend his uh, elbow joint okay fully outstretch the hand and you ask the subject or patient to touch to the nose with the help of his index finger so from the outstretched position he has to come and touch his nose okay first you do it with the right hand then you do it with the left hand so now uh, with open eyes this test is being done with both the hands right similarly now you ask the person to close this close his eyes and then ask him to repeat the same thing so the patient will now close his eyes you ask him to fully abduct his hand and uh, extend his elbow joint and you ask him to touch the nose with the help of his fin uh, index finger do it on both the sides remember you should not forget to do on one side okay because you have to do on both right side and left side finger nose test done with open eyes helps to detect motor ataxia meaning initially when the finger nose test was done patient's eyes were open right so now if the patient is not able to do this finger nose test properly meaning he is not able to come and touch the nose uh, with his finger with the open eyes itself then it det detects uh, it tells you that the patient has motor ataxia but now a uh, patient was able to do properly with the open eyes okay now you ask the person to do with the closed eyes this time now the patient is not able to do the finger nose test properly that detects the sensory ataxia so you understood now why we are doing with open eyes and closed eyes in the open eyes itself if, we, if the subject is not able to do the finger nose test properly it means the patient's cerebellum is affected that's why his motor problem is there that's why he is not able to bring the hand from outstretched position and to come and touch his nose okay but if he is able to do properly with the open eyes he is able to do come and touch the nose with the both the hands it means cerebellum is fine intact okay now but once the person is uh, closes his eyes and you ask the person to do this uh, finger nose test now he is not able to do with the closed eyes it means the problem is in the sensory uh, pathway it means his dorsal column is affected or his proprioception is affected that is why with a closed eyes he is not able to do but with open eyes he will do it properly that is why remember finger nose test has to be done with both open eyes and closed eyes mainly to differentiate between the sensory and motor ataxia we have another test which is called romberg sign or romberg test this is mainly used to test uh, test for sensory attack, ataxia or detect sensory ataxia again here remember in sensory ataxia the problem is in the loss of proprioception or joint position sense proprioception is nothing but joint position sense so this sensation is lost in sensory ataxia so what is happening is in how to do this romberg sign or test it okay the patient is asked to stand with both his feet close together Uh, with a open eyes first the person just has has to stand straight okay with both his uh, legs and feet close together and then now just observe if the patient is swaying to any one side okay now after this patient is asked to close his eyes 
and remember while doing this test examiner had to ensure that uh, the patient does not fall to any one side and get some injuries additional injuries throughout this test okay now when the person has closed his eyes and is standing straight now with a closed eyes uh, if the patient's face to one side after closing the eyes then you call rhombic sign as positive okay but with a patient with a cerebellar ataxia or if there's any labyrinthine problem no what happens is even without closing the eyes patient will start uh, you know, getting unsteady or he'll try to start to fall to one side that is motor ataxia in sensory ataxia what is happening with the open eyes the subject is able to stand properly but once the patient closes his eyes he'll start swaying to one side and that is called as rhombic sign positive rhombic sign positive meaning patient is swaying to one side now here remember uh, this again helps to differentiate between a sensory and motor ataxia uh, now if the patient has problem in the right cerebellum so the uh, the right cerebellum the left cerebellum okay if the patient has problem in the right cerebellum remember the the patient will sway to the right side okay if the patient has problem in the left cerebellum patient will sway to the left side so always remember cerebellum has ipsilateral control meaning it controls the same half of the body if you remember the cerebral cortex the left cerebral cortex controls the right half of the body the right cerebral cortex controls the left half of the body for the cerebral cortex but for cerebellum remember it controls the same side it controls the ipsilateral side if it is right cerebellum controls the right half of the body left cerebellum controls the left half of the body that is why any lesion in the right cerebellum person will sway to the right side problem in the left cerebellum patient will face face to the left side similarly the dorsal column pathway if the right dorsal column pathway is affected patient will fall to the right side okay patient will sway to the right side similarly there is a left dorsal column lesion which carry the dorsal column which carries the proprioception sensation if there is a lesion the patient will sway to the left side so the direction of swaying also gives you an additional information in this test now we'll see why in sensory ataxia once the uh, subject closes his eyes he starts swaying in rhombic sign now when eyes are open vision compensates to maintain posture because our uh, visual inputs will be give, will be giving us the clue to what extent we are moving our hands or joints but in finger nose test vision is giving the clues when the person is doing with open eyes but once he closes the nose sorry once he closes his eyes now why in sensory ataxia once the subject closes his eyes he starts swaying in rhombic sign when the eyes are open actually vision compensates to maintain the posture because our uh, vision is getting clues regarding the different position of the joint where where our hand is but in finger nose test once the uh, vision is giving the clue to where the tip where is the tip of the nose so once the patient closes his eyes patient cannot touch the tip of the nose in sensory ataxia because the proprioceptive inputs are not going to the brain so vision is also not there now since eye is closed so that's why the patient cannot touch the tip of the nose once the eye is closed in sensory ataxia by in sensory ataxia once the subject closes his eyes he starts swaying especially in rhombic sign when we are testing right so when the eyes are open what happens is vision is compensating to maintain posture in finger nose test vision gives clues to where is the tip of the nose so once the patient closes his eyes patient cannot touch the tip of the nose because uh, our proprioceptive inputs are not being carried to the brain so only vision was compensating when your eyes are open so when the eyes is also closed now the visual impulse is also not there and proprioceptive input is also not there to the brain so that's why brain cannot uh, think like where where is the tip of the nose it does it cannot uh, uh, like identify the tip of the nose that is why patient will not be able to touch the tip of the nose so this is most commonly seen the rhombic sign is positive when uh, subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord okay uh, this is most commonly seen in the deficiency of vitamin b12 what happens is there is demyelination uh, the in subacute combined degeneration it is characterized by degeneration of the so dorsal column as well as the lateral column of the spinal cord due to demyelination so in dorsal column if it is affected you know it cannot carry proprioceptive impulses that is why rhombic sign becomes positive in this case